Welcome back to this day. Joining me now is Dr. John Havanasian. And did I get it right? You did great. <laughs> you did great, Bobby. It's so nice to meet you. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. And we just celebrated the 4th of July. Did you uh, celebrate in Laguna Beach? Or? Uh, it, yeah, we had a terrific fireworks show in Laguna Beach. And uh, it's always fun to see all the people who come in to, to enjoy the fireworks there. So, yeah. And yeah. welcome to the community. Welcome to, uh, to, to being part of Laguna Woods Village. This is just a terrific place. And I wish you many years of happiness and success here. Oh, so. that's so sweet of you. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. I was going to say, we love going to Laguna Beach. One of our most favorite 4th of Julys was sitting on the wall, on the beach and all the people that came down for the fireworks. <laughs> of course, we didn't have a home to go to. We were just there all day. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but they, somebody took out a surfboard and had fireworks actually going off of the surfboard. <laughs> was a I'm lot very of fun. local of them. Until a wave came and then knocked it over. <laughs> <laughs> the ocean always wins, doesn't it? <laughs> so... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so thank you for joining us. We're talking about our kids. You have three kids. Yeah. Boy, girl, boy. That's all right. All three still living at home? Uh, we have, well, one of it, one is away at college, but but home for the summer. Our second, our daughter's going to go to UCLA in the fall and, oh, wow. and a 14-year-old who's uh, entering ninth grade. So Now is your daughter following in dad's footsteps? Nobody's uh, headed toward medicine, uh, and that's okay uh, because it, it's a personal calling you have to have. She's going to be an aerospace engineer. She's, wow. She just did her first <clears throat> solo flight in an airplane. She's learning to be a, a pilot as well and uh, just a remarkable kid. Oh my gosh, my yeah. I was reading that about you, that you fly a Piper Archer? I, I, I'm a pilot as well. I recently got my instrument rating and enjoy just, you know, kind of recreationally flying around the state and it's sometimes out of state as well. So, so is that how to... she got her interest in that? We got the interest simultaneously. And uh, she was a little bit behind me in training because of uh, other school activities she had that got in the way. But, uh, yeah, you know, we she wanted to do it because she wanted to be an aerospace engineer. And she said, uh -huh. can, I, can I learn to be a pilot? And I said, only if I could do it with you. And it's been a great daddy-daughter activity for oh, us to yeah. do together. It's one of the wonderful things we enjoy so oh that's wonderful that's great <laughs> yeah <laughs> well so what are we talking about today i know it has something to do with diabetes yeah well there there's been a lot of interest in some new drugs that are um, uh, used for both weight loss and for diabetes their primary use is, has been for diabetes uh wego v is uh, is the weight loss one that's been more widely known ozempic is the ver same drug when used for for diabetes and then there's a list of other uh, uh, semaglutide, liraglutide, and a variety of other drugs that work similarly. And uh, it's of interest because there's been some news about how the use of drugs to lower blood sugar or for weight loss among diabetics can uh, affect the eyes adversely, can cause trouble in the eyes. And we want to kind of set the record straight and help people understand that because these drugs are so very popular. Um, we want to, you know, kind of get the truth out there about it. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, because some, some studies are showing that it can cause vision changes. Vision. If it does, what kind of vision changes does it So, affect? really, it has not so much to do with the individual drugs themselves, but with the idea that we're now controlling blood sugar more, uh, you know, more uh, properly. In patients who have high blood sugar, the, uh, the sugar molecules themselves will actually go inside the lens of the eye and cause it to swell, which causes it to focus and make the person a little more nearsighted. So it's this artificial nearsightedness that people with diabetes can have if their blood sugar is under control. If you uh, suddenly control that blood sugar, uh, that, that will change and their lens will revert to actually to its normal state and their vision will seem to change when it's really changing to what it should be. So that is certainly disconcerting if you're a, a person with diabetes and you suddenly have good blood sugar control, there are these vision changes. Now that's not harmful to the eye in the long term. Uh, but it is a, you know, a surprise to people. So that's the short-term type of risk. The longer-term type of risk that can occur in some people who have uncontrolled diabetes, meaning that their blood sugar level is high, uh, when they finally get it under control, if it's you know, rel relatively suddenly brought under control, that can cause changes in the blood vessels in the eye that are like the bad changes that come from diabetes. So progression of diabetic retinopathy comes <clears throat> when you have sudden control of blood sugar in someone who is uncontrolled. Does that make sense? Yeah, that definitely makes sense. <clears throat> so, so these changes then, are they, it's not like a permanent change. <clears throat> so in the long term, what I refer to as the long term, the blood vessel changes, <clears throat> they can be permanent, excuse me. 
Um, so uh, there's a picture that we have that kind of gives an idea about this. Uh, in, uh, in a normal, healthy eye, we see blood vessels that are normal. You know, they, they contain blood and they contain the fluids that belong within them. Uh, but with diabetic retinopathy, these blood vessels can leak fluid. They can actually break and have, you know, leak of blood cells. So there's, there's red blood that, that leaks out of them. And that has a toxic or damaging effect on the retina. And in these pictures, you see left versus right, uh, you know, what is, what is abnormal. Uh, in the picture, just to give you a sense of orientation, what you see on the right, uh, in the left-hand picture labeled normal, uh, the optic nerve there is on the, on the right side. It looks like the, the sun. Uh, it has kind of a yellowish uh, character with blood vessels coming out of it. And then in the very center of the picture is the macula, is the part of the eye that we get our detailed vision from. It has a little darker color. There's a little bit more pigment in the retina there, and that's why it has that appearance. And that's a normal versus on the right, it's fairly evident that there's blood and, and abnormal things happening in, in, you know, this is pretty aggressive diabetic retinopathy in the picture shown here. So how do you correct it or how do you... Yeah. yeah, so it depends on, on what's happening. Uh, in many cases for diabetic retinopathy, just long-term control of the blood sugar will make these uh, problems less. They will, they will get better on their own. Blood may clear on its own. Uh, in some cases, we use medications that are placed inside the eye. Not painful, but it's, a, it's not something you want to have done. Um, uh, you, know, you, you do if it's a threatening your vision, but you, you right. know, it's not, a, not something that we, uh, we relish doing. Uh, but uh, laser is also very effective, not painful, and very often can reduce diabetic retinopathy. So we have lots of treatments, okay. and thankfully in recent years, uh, we've had a lot of great drugs to help control blood sugar among diabetics. And so we don't see nearly the degree and the frequency of diabetic retinopathy like you see in these pictures these days in our practices like we used to. Uh, before we had the better drugs. These new drugs like Ozempic and others are making things even better because not only are they controlling blood sugar, but they're helping people with diabetes to lose weight, which makes it easier to control their blood sugar. Right, so. right. And so if left untreated, what would happen then if there was... Yeah, so with diabetes left untreated will cause changes in the blood vessels that will eventually cause people to go blind. Uh, they will mm. cause uh, damage to the macula, as I showed you, that will make it, uh, you know, legal blindness or outright, you know, blindness yeah. where, where they lose the vision, potentially in both eyes. And that's wow. why, you know, the, the, the take home message for today is that certainly if you're diabetic, uh, you should see a doctor, uh, first a primary care doctor to help you get the blood sugar under control. And soon after, you should see a qualified eye doctor to dilate the, your eyes, to take a good look in the back of the, uh, of the eye at the retina, to determine what level, if any, of diabetic retinopathy you have, and then at least an annual exam after that to monitor for signs of change. Don't be afraid of these drugs if they're prescribed by your doctor because they, in general, in the long term, have a beneficial effect uh, in helping you preserve your vision. Controlling blood sugar is the most important thing, and that's what these drugs are designed to do. Good, good. So the takeaway is that, yeah, they're, they're, it's okay, they're it's safe to do it. Yes. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Wonderful. And, and um, I think I read something about, like, if you're 65 or older, you qualify for a free eye exam or that kind of thing, no? So um, depends on insurance. With Medicare, um, an eye exam, you, almost everybody who's even over 40 has some diagnosis, whether it's a private insurance or, you know, if you're older and you have Medicare where the exam can be covered. Now, not all portions are covered necessarily. There's a refraction that is not covered by Medicare. It's just a matter of law they don't cover it. So there's a, an out-of-pocket cost for that. But if you have a vision plan, that may be covered. Uh, so it's a little bit more complicated than a yes, okay. no answer. Okay. But generally speaking, the exam, the health exam of the eye is covered by medical insurance and by Medicare. Uh, as long as there's some diagnosis that we find, and that could be as simple as a little bit of dry eye or irritation or something that almost every one of us has. So definitely, it's uh, definitely take care of your eyes. Get go in and see a doctor. Get checked. That's right. It's one of those things you don't want to go. Oh, maybe it'll get better. Or, yeah, don't or just I'm assume. Fine. <laughs> right. If you see well, don't just assume that, uh, that that you're fine. If your old glasses seem to still work, don't assume you're not having a problem because there are diseases like glaucoma, macular degeneration can sneak up on people. And we have treatments for these things, so they don't need to threaten anyone's vision. Wonderful, great. And then I have a question for you. I don't know if you perhaps spoke with this on one of your visits here, but just recently, 
you kind of got a big award named of uh, one of the 100 most influential, influential people worldwide. <laughs> you know, Tell me about this. Well, there's a, um, a, a UK publication, uh, um, an English publication that uh, publishes a list of the most influential people, and it's, uh, it's selected by, um, a, I think, a poll of, of eye doctors around the world to, to see who's, you know, who are the influencers. And uh, uh, I, I work with a wonderful group of doctors at Harvard Eye, and I'm one, and I, I do a fair amount of research and writing and, and lecturing and those sorts of things. And, and I'm honored to have been selected by my peers, not, not peers in my practice, but outside my practice for, right. for that distinction. So it's, but it's, I think, really an honor for all of us that uh, you know, we are making together that impact on the world of eye care. That's great. That's wonderful. <laughs> and then you travel the, the world as well, helping people in other countries. Yeah, um, I've made a bunch of trips. Uh, you know, when, if God gives you skills to help people, um, it's nice to put them to use, and it's nice to put them to use not just at home but elsewhere in some of the most needy places. So whether it's Mexico or, or um, you know, other parts of, uh, to the Caribbean or Fiji, uh, my biggest work is probably in Armenia and the former Soviet Union where we have a real significant project that uh, has for now 30 years been, I, I've, I'm not old enough to have been involved for 30 years, but um, for 30 years we've been making impact in that country and the Armenian Eye Care Project is a real pride of ours that we get to help people who are so very needy uh, and so vulnerable to blindness. Uh, where simple things we can do, drugs, uh, examinations, laser treatments, in some cases surgery can, can help save them. So we've put a lot of resources to, to help them. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, love to hear that. Do you have any trips coming up? Yeah, this October I'll be there. We have a big conference, a bunch of U.S. doctors coming uh, to Armenia, as well as all the eye doctors in Armenia. And we've got lots of corneas we'll be bringing for transplantation from the U.S. eye banks okay. and, uh, and experts to help teach uh, because, you, you know, the old saying about give a man a fish versus teach a man to fish. Yes. We're all about teaching them how to take care of patients, and they do a wonderful job. Oh, well, that's great. Love to hear that. I'm yeah. looking forward to hearing about your trip when you come back. <laughs> Thank you. So nice to meet you. Yeah, so nice to meet you. Thank you for joining us. Please stay with us because we will have more coming up right after this.